welfare schemes and freebies are an integral part of India's polity. The line between what constitutes a freebie and a welfare scheme is hazy. However, they still have a huge impact on the political economy of India. Take a look at this report as we decode this nuance. India's political landscape is incomplete without welfare schemes. These programs by the centre and the states mainly target India's poor. There are over 700 minor and major schemes, fully or partially funded by the centre. These together constitute nearly $243 billion of India's budget. Welfare schemes help the poor have a life of dignity. Education and healthcare schemes help the poor and improve human capital and, in turn, the economy. Take the midday meal schemes at state levels, for instance. Several studies show the scheme has helped raise school attendance rates. But there is a fine line between welfare schemes and freebies. Freebies, often in the form of welfare schemes, have earned a negative connotation. They conjure up visuals of free TV sets and mixer grinders being doled out to families. Many have even called out freebies as bribes to India's poor electorate. The debate over what exactly constitutes freebies has now reached India's Supreme Court. But there is no decision or clarity yet. What is clear is that they come at a cost to the government. We are a report, we on World is One. Now for more on this, we are being joined by Mr. Jayant Krishna, CEO of the Foundation for Advancing Science and Technology, live from Delhi. Very warm welcome to World Business. What's, uh, what's your understanding of a freebie in the Indian context? Well, I mean, let's understand, uh, you know, freebies and uh, welfare schemes, they're often uh, clubbed together and they're talked about in the same breath. Uh, this is what the Prime Minister Modi calls as the uh, ravery culture. Uh, so the Reserve Bank of India has estimated that uh, different states uh, roll out, uh, you know, different uh, uh, quantum uh, for freebies uh, and, and, and the range is almost 0.1% of GDP to 2.7% of state GDP mm. is what states roll out in the form of freebies. Punjab and Andhra Pradesh, the top, uh, because they spend more than 2% of their GDP on these uh, freebies, you know. Mm. And, and they account for almost 8 to 9% of the revenue receipts of those uh, states, uh, uh, you know, which they spend on subsidies, you know. I think let's understand, you know, freebies add to the public debt burden. Uh, you know, it, it causes, uh, you know, revenue deficit as well. Mm. And and it increases the fiscal fiscal deficit in the, in the budget, you know. And a and lot of people believe that if you give freebies, you know, people will consume more and it will add to the GDP of the state. Well, let me tell you, most of the freebies do not result into any significant increase in purchasing power and leading to uh, uh, enhanced uh, GDP. So that doesn't happen. Uh, it's it's it, it's a shame. I think it's it's a gift culture. I would even go to the extent of uh, a country which is driven by election after election, be it the Lok Sabha elections or the state elections. I think it is something like uh, bribing the electorate uh, out of uh, you know uh, government uh, funds. You know, mm. uh, so I, I I fundamentally believe that. Uh, this is surely, I mean, there has to be a consensus among political parties otherwise. And every political party wants to outsmart the other one, you know, mm. in freebies, you know. I think uh, that's that's what my take is. Uh, Mr. Krishna, I just wanted to sort of go back to what you mentioned that, of course, freebies and welfare schemes, well, they are obviously different. I wanted you to just establish those differences here. What makes them different given the definition is quite hazy between the two. So I think, I mean, let's look at what kind of uh, things normally constitute freebies. You know, the farm loan waivers uh, for farmers, you know, MSME interest waivers for uh, smaller industries, free laptops, free mobiles, uh, free transport to women, you know, uh, government jobs without, uh, you know, on considerations other than merit, you know, cooking gas subsidies, uh, electricity is a huge elect subsidized electricity or free electricity, uh, you know, uh, to farmers, you know, mm -hmm. the, the very talk of revival of the old pension scheme, free education, healthcare, you know, skill development for free, you know, see the, or, or uh, even if you look at the what government of India has announced that the free uh, food grains for five more years, the total cost on, on, on the country is of the order of uh, uh, rupees, uh, you know, 11 lakh, uh, uh, you know, crores, you know. So I think these are all collectively called freebies. And as far as your question goes, that what are welfare schemes out of it? I would still feel the money that the government spends on education, healthcare, skill development, mm. science and technology. These kind of things are, 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 should, to my mind, be kept away from freebies. Because if education is given for free or healthcare is given for free, 
that is actually this the government's responsibility so i think these kind of things should constitute the uh, you know the, the the welfare scheme and and not freebies even if you look at the transport for women free mm-hmm. transport for women actually there have been studies which have shown that if you uh, if you allow uh, if you give free transport to women it leads to enhanced women uh, labor uh, you know participation in the labor force of the country mm. so i think i think one has to uh, there is a fine there is a very very fine difference uh, difference between the freebie and the welfare scheme mm. but but i think it is uh, you know it's not very difficult to differentiate and i'm all for welfare schemes in a, in a welfare state but but surely not for uh, freebies at all uh, mr krishna no as far as a government working is concerned how can a government balance welfare schemes with fiscal discipline if you to just establish a better understanding of that so so i think too many of freebies it, uh, you know as i said earlier they enhance the fiscal deficit uh, mm. they increase the revenue deficit of the mm. government uh, and and add to the public uh, debt uh, burden so i think uh, to my mind it will not happen because different political parties in a, in a in a in a country where elections happen virtually all the time mm. you know i think it will not happen left to political party it will not happen so either the election commission of india or the matter is also now with supreme court mm. i think they have to formulate some broad guidelines and cap you know they could they could bracket some first of all define what are welfare schemes those should be kept out but those which are pure freebies you know mm. those those should be capped uh, as a percentage of the state's uh, uh, gdp mm. and it should not be one cap because the states could be bracketed in multiple categories the poorer states where the schedule uh, uh, you know uh, scheduled caste scheduled tribes and and backward classes are more the poverty is more per mm-hmm. capita income is lower surely those states need more so there you know the cap could be you know let's say 1% 1.5% but in the in the in the richer states like maharashtra tamil nadu uh, you know uh, andhra you know uh, the telangana these kind of states you know it should be not more than 0.5% of the budget and uh, otherwise it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a very very bad game and it's mm-hmm. a it's a zero sum game to my mind it it may uh, help political parties win elections but but uh, political parties win elections or lose elections on freebies but but who loses india as a nation loses to my, to my mind these guidelines are very very important mm-hmm. otherwise uh, this is going only going to worsen in, in years to come all right that was mr jayant krishna joining us from new delhi thank you so much for sharing all your insights sir